Ludwig Krüger, Münchner Abendzeitung. Paris Evnik, Bulgarska Slova, Sofia. Piotr Woroszewski, Red Star, Moscow. Not in order, so sorry. Good morning, Colonel Sanders. Francisco de los Santos, El Mundo, Buenos Aires. I am Francisco de los Santos, El Mundo, Buenos Aires. Thank you. Good morning, comrades. Johanna Hartwig, DNB News Agency, Berlin. Nagata Toma, Tome, Tokyo. My name is. Good morning, Senor Voroshevsky. Aren't you going to attend the trial? No, Comrade Siva. My credentials are not in order. And I wouldn't be surprised if yours are. Absurd. Not. <laughs> Manuel Siva, Diario de Noticias, Lisbon. Credentials not in order. So sorry. Just a minute. I am an accredited correspondent, the same as the others. If you wish to file a complaint, please consult Bureau of Enlightenment. Is there something you don't want me to see? What sort of trial is this? Hey, there. Why won't they admit them? I wonder. All these precautions, these soldiers. Is this to be a military trial? How can it be? This is a civil court. I can tell better when I see who the judges are. You are invited to represent your newspaper at the most important hearing in the Tokyo District Court. <laughs> invited. I was picked up yesterday by the police, examined for two hours, and last night my rooms were searched. So were mine. And the mine. I knew it the minute I discovered the plumbing was out of order. You would think by now they would know that I wouldn't plug up my own drain pipe with secret documents. If it happened to all of us, you should not be offended. Thomas, right. After all, we must remember that Japan is at war. General Mitsumi. Admiral Yamagichi, commander of the Imperial Fleet. The judges of this court will now exercise their powers according to the law in the name of the emperor. Up, stand. Toyama. Mitsuru Toyama. The greatest political power in the Empire is the head of the Black Dragon Society. You have prepared all evidence? Yes, Excellency. All witnesses are present? witnesses are present. Have the defendants brought into the courtroom. Hikukunini, Dole Kitty. Hikukunino, Dole Kitty.
Mr. Pleasant will respond that. Hats off! Hats off! The prisoners will respond as their names are called. Captain Harvey Ross. Captain Ross. Lieutenant Kenneth Bayforth. Lieutenant Bayforth. Lieutenant Angela Canelli. Lieutenant Canelli. Sergeant Martin Stoner. Sergeant Stoner. Lieutenant Peter Vincent. Lieutenant Peter Vincent. Sergeant Jens Skwasnik. Sergeant Skwasnik. Lieutenant Wynne Greenbaum. Lieutenant Greenbaum. Sergeant Howard Clinton. Sergeant Clinton. You may be seated. If it isn't asking too much, sir, we'd like to know what this is all about. You wish to make inquiries? Yes, I do. Speak. Are we being put on trial? That is correct. On what charge? You will be informed in due time. Excuse my ignorance, Your Honor, but back home, if we were on trial, we'd be entitled to a lawyer or something. You will have adequate counsel to defend you. Thank you, sir. We'd appreciate someone from the Swiss legation or the Red Cross. Your counsel has already been appointed by the court. It should be Sakai. You may have a brief conference with the defendants. My name is Sakai, Princeton, class of 31. My name is Greenbaum, City College of New York, class of 39. Uh, sir, may I say something to the court? Go ahead, Greeny. We're all in this together. Do you mind? Your Honor, I object. Speak! I've had some experience with law, and I know that no civil court in the world has any jurisdiction over prisoners of war. I refer you to the Geneva Treaty, and I quote, Combatants who are captured are entitled to that protection which their own state is unable to afford them. Their lives, ceasing to be jura publica under the dominion of belligerency, have become jura universalia when seen from one point of view and jura privata when seen from another. Thus, by a double portal, they re-enter the sphere of normal relations. Though separated for the time being from any political community, they once more belong to humanity and to themselves. And as of their lives, so of their liberties. It is of their combatant liberty alone that belligerency can dispose. So you see, Your Honor, you can't try us in the civil court. And I therefore move the charges be dismissed, whatever they are. He is absolutely right. This court has no jurisdiction over them. The crime of which you are guilty is a violation of international law. The emperor's government finds no basis on which you may seek immunity under the Articles of War. The procurator will read the indictment. Whereas the defendant have been identified as members of the armed forces of the United States of America, an enemy with which the Japanese Empire is at war, and whereas on the 18th day of April in the year of 1942, the cities of Tokyo, Yokohama, Nagoya, Kobe, and Osaka were bombed by enemy aircraft, and whereas the above mentioned members of the armed forces of the United States while bombing above mentioned cities diverted their attack by military objectives and dropped their bomb upon their military installations, such as schools, hospitals, and temples of worship. This is completely false. I and whereas the defendant flew at low altitudes and directed the machine gun fire into crowds, killing many women and children. Brutality! Brutality! Therefore, the emperor's government demands the conviction of the defendants for the crime of murder. What do you mean, murder? Yeah, That's a lie, you know! We never machine gun anybody. We hit our target Level ourselves! Off. We'll speak our piece when the time comes. Summon the first witness. Yen Jiu Ling. Bu Yao Jiang Zhou. 
不孝的儿子不要多讲话。如果你去买米多，等于你去买中国。I affirm. That according to my conscience, I will speak the truth, adding nothing and concealing nothing. Your name? Yuan Qiuling. Your nationality? Chinese. Where is your home? Kongwang. You hold an official position there? I'm governor of Kongwang province. Where were you on the day the bombing took place? At my home. Did you see any of the defendants on that date? <laughs> yes, Excellency. Describe the circumstances. I learned of the bombing over my radio. The first reports were confusing and contradictory as to the number of planes involved and the amount of damage caused. As night approached, Tokyo Radio warned that the American planes were believed headed across China. Still later, other reports claimed the storm was forcing many of the planes down. One of them was reported to have crashed in the mountains. Another was believed to have fallen into the sea. Then it was reported one of the planes was in the vicinity of Kong Wong.
to get up, Skipper. We've arrived. You hurt? I don't know yet. Okay. I think so. Nothing broken, as far as I can tell. You scared the pants off me. I was beginning to think you met that little speech you made upstairs. Have you seen any of the others? I haven't seen anything but mud. Mrs. Murphy sounds like she's getting ready. Hey, Skipper! Captain Ross! Sir? It's me, Greedy! Hey! Hey, Greedy! It's me, Clint! Clint! But you needn't be so polite. We must have landed in a rice field. Rice? I'll never touch this stuff again as long as I live, even with raisins. It's Mrs. Murphy. Who goes there? Hey, Clint, it's the skipper. Oh, hey, 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 no reflection on you, Vincent, but I'm sure glad we still got the same skipper. So am I. So am I, sir. Thanks, fellas. So am I. That's too bad. Mrs. Murphy kept a good house. As long as you are here, Captain, how about moving us away from this fire, this place they'd be crawling with Japs? If you're coming out, come out with your hands up. Who are you? It's Georgia Tech! Bayforth! Bayforth! What happened to your ship? I crashed the landing in the goo. Did you burn her? I didn't have to. She sunk out of sight. Burke was killed. Please, forgive the intrusion, gentlemen. It is not safe to stay here. You haven't introduced us to your friends yet, Lieutenant. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Yuan Chu Lin, governor of Kongwon province. And this is my son, Moi. How do you do? How do you do, gentlemen? I'm glad to know you. Hmm? Why'd you pick him up? Oh, he picked us up down the road. He said he was out looking for us. Or China is grateful to you for the blue at Tokyo, Captain. How do you know about that? Tokyo Radio has talked of nothing else all day. How do we do? Was there much damage? One moment they announce no damage. The next they say fires are raging out of control. First they say there were no casualties. Then they estimate casualties may exceed 4,000. Sounds like we put the fear of God into them. The Japanese do not fear God. They fear only bombs. No doubt, Captain. You have a secret base you are trying to reach. And perhaps I can guide you. Well, that's very kind of you, Governor. But we can't tell you where we're going any more than we can tell you where we came from. Those are our orders. A million pardons. I should not have asked. It was a stupid of me. May I make a suggestion, Captain? What? Perhaps his honor will lend us the station wagon. 
My humble car is at your disposal. You have done much for China, but the Japanese patrols are all around us. You must not travel in these clothes. You expose yourself to much danger, and you must eat and rest. My house is not far. Putin, Putin, you're not going to be able to talk. I'm not going to be able to talk. My son joins me in urging you to accept our invitation. Okay, Governor. We'll take a chance. If you're on the level, we'll never know how to thank you enough. But if you cross us, we'll certainly know how to kill you. <laughs> As your excellencies can see, my guests found no method of carrying out their promise. Still in excellent health. The court is particularly interested in any conversations in which the defendants mention the target struck by their bombs. Yes, Excellency. Mistaking me for a possible accomplice, these men were in a boisterous and a boastful mood. They laughed as they told me how the machine gun children at play in a schoolyard and how they destroyed hospital after hospital and temple after temple. And the court can well imagine how contemptible I felt having these monsters share my table, even if it was only for the purpose of detaining them until Japanese troops arrived. Butati! 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 This man is a liar. Sure, we told him we hit our targets, but they weren't hospitals, temples, or schools. They were oil storage centers, airports, and shipyards. That's what we hit, and that's what we told him. Excellencies, my son was present at all times. He will gladly corroborate my statements if your excellencies think it is necessary. The court has no cause to suspect the witness of perjury. You may step down. Hey, just a minute here. We got a right to cross-examine that. Get that liar back. Work on that guy. Break him down. Our law does not permit cross-examination unless the court suspects the witness did not tell all the truth. But the witness did Look, didn't... look, what's the use? This is a lynching. General Ito Mitsubi. I affirm that according to my conscience, I will speak the truth, adding nothing and concealing nothing. Your name and rank? Ito Mitsubi, General in Command of Military Intelligence. Following the bombings, did your department photograph the result of the attacks on Tokyo, Nagoya, Kobe, and Osaka? It did, Excellency. Specifically, did you prepare motion pictures showing civilian casualties? Yes, Excellency. Are you ready to display them to the court? Yes, Excellency. Sudario Shimate. This is where the American bomb fell in Mesu Street in Yokohama. The court will notice the wreckage of the Daijingu Shrine and the many civilian casualties. Here you see the result of bombing and machine gunning in Nagoya. That is not an actual air raid. Let's be still. 800 civilian casualties and the Buddhist temple of Ehoji destroyed. Those pictures were made during an air raid drill, before Japan was even at war. You know, we were all there. I wasn't there. This is what happened when the Americans brutally bombed Shimbashi Station in Tokyo, which, although it was a railroad terminal, was not a military objective, but was, on the other hand, crowded with civilians attempting to flee to a place of safety. Tomate! Sit down! Sudario Akite! This, at least, Excellency, is the truth. I'm a soldier of China. My father has answered to his ancestors for your betrayal. Sit down! 
Stand up, fellas. My man. The court regrets this interruption and especially deplores its nature. The Chinese are a treacherous people. Try as we will to enlighten them, they remain barbarians who will strike down even their own flesh and blood if the price is high enough. I believe we can spare ourselves further visual testimony. General Mitsubi, can you tell the court the base from which these prisoners came? Yes, Excellency. As a result of our preliminary investigation, we have every reason to believe that they came from an aircraft carrier. Of the Hornet type. I trust your excellencies will pardon my inexcusable interruption. Proceed, Admiral Yamakichi. General Mitsubi, your brilliance in matters of military investigation is famous throughout the Empire. I therefore rebuke myself for calling to your attention certain matters which you must already have investigated most exhaustively. Uh, certain findings of a neighbor board of inquiry. I am grateful for your excellency's assistance. In a spirit of the most respectful cooperation, I should like to place these findings at your excellency's disposal. In private. The prisoners will be removed. Court is adjourned until tomorrow at the same hour. Emperor has charged this court with the responsibility of learning the exact base from which this attack was launched. I will countenance no political bickering between the Navy and the Army. You are convinced the American planes came from a carrier? Yes, Excellency. And you and Maria Makichi, you disagree? I would not so far humiliate either the General or myself. I merely wish you to consider certain facts. If it is proved that I am in error, I shall feel that I have falsely accused the Imperial Navy of negligence, and I shall apologize with my life. Oh, hi, with Your Excellency's permission, I believe I can produce immediate proof of my contention. Proceed, General Mitsubi. What is your name? Saburo Goto, Excellency. You are a sailor in the Japanese Navy? Yes, Excellency. Where were you on the morning of April 18th? On my ship, the Nijuni Nichimaru, a converted trawler. Where was your ship? We were on patrol, 800 miles at sea. Tell us what happened. We were sunk by an enemy vessel. At what time of day was this? Shortly after 8 o'clock in the morning. I submit, Excellency, that the sinking of this man's ship by a carrier at 8 o'clock in the morning would time perfectly with the arrival of the bombers over Tokyo at midday. You may go. One moment, please. You have been taught to identify enemy vessels of various types? Yes, Excellency. Describe the type of enemy vessel which sank you. I cannot tell you, Excellency. Why not? I was below deck in the boiler room when we were hit. And yet I was the only survivor. You did not yourself see the enemy ship? When I came to the surface and recovered consciousness, I saw only the wreckage of our own ship. It was raining and the visibility was poor. Your Excellency, this man's vessel was patrolling an area which the Navy has heavily mined. It is not uncommon for a mine to break loose and sink or damage one of our own vessels. I submit that such an accident is far more probable than the presence of an enemy carrier. 
a zone which the Imperial Navy regards as impregnable. That is all. I have some technical information, Excellency, which I consider conclusive proof that the American planes could not have come from a carrier. The American planes which bombed Japan have been officially identified as the type known as the P-25 bomber. It has a wing spread of 67 feet and an overall length of 54.1875 feet. This is the largest type of American aircraft carrier, the Hornet type. It has a flight deck which is 809.6 feet in length. The presence on this flight deck of 16 B-25s will reduce the deck space by more than two-thirds, making a takeoff at sea mathematically impossible. Can you refute these facts? I should like time to examine them. I expect this examination to be completed without delay. Again, I wish to remind you of the Emperor's personal interest in this matter. You are excused, gentlemen. You know, I've been thinking and thinking, and I can't figure out what made that monkey say we came from an aircraft. He was just trying to get the Navy's goat, you dope. It is I, Moi Ling. It's our Chinese friend. Gentlemen, I propose we elect him an honorary member of our squadron. All in favor say aye. Aye! aye. Do you hear that, Moi Ling? Yes, my captain. I wish to explain why I did not act sooner than I did. It required much time to decide to kill my own father. team any time. Captain Ross? Yes? You come. Kushu. Well, boys, I'll see you again. Soon, I hope.
Captain Ross? Yes, sir. At last. My name is Kepler, Carl Kepler of the Swiss Red Cross. Well, I'm sure mighty glad to see you, sir. And I to see you. Ever since I learned you Americans were captured, I've been trying desperately to reach you, but nobody would admit knowing anything about you, where you were or what had happened to you. I would still be cooling my heels in somebody's office if it hadn't been for Tiran Mitsubi. Mr. Keppel, may I see your credentials? We're charged with murder, Mr. Keppel, and General Mitsubi is the star witness for the prosecution. Murder? You're on trial. In a civilian criminal court, Mr. Keppel. They claim we bombed and machine gunned civilians and are not entitled to be considered prisoners of war. I'll get word to Washington immediately. They will take steps to stop this outrage. You'll forgive me for being suspicious, Mr. Keppel, but you can see the spot we're in. I do indeed, and I shall do everything in my power to help you. I'll come again and report my progress. Meanwhile, Captain, goodbye and good luck to you and your men. Thank you, sir. Mm, could you spare me a moment, Mr. Keppel? I'm at your service, General. Captain Ross no doubt told you about the charges against him and his men? Yes, sir, he did. Tell me, Mr. Keppel, in your opinion, can Washington force us to drop these charges? It most certainly can and will. Remember, there are over 100,000 Japanese nationals in internment camps in the United States. Thank you very much, Mr. Keppel. Your observations are most interesting. If there's anything further I can do for you, don't hesitate to call upon me. Sit down, please. Ever been in California, Captain? Lots of times. Recently? General, you're a soldier and an officer, and you know as well as I do. I can't give you any information other than name, rank, and serial number. I was only curious about Santa Barbara. I lived there for some time. A beautiful town. Worked on a fishing boat. <laughs> and charted every inch of water from San Diego to Seattle. Those charts will be useful someday. Don't bet on it, General. Perhaps you do not believe Japan will win the war? Me and 140 million others. You still doubt it. Look here, Captain. Singapore, Hong Kong, the Indies, Thailand. May I remind you, Captain, in five months, we have changed from a have-not nation to the world's largest have nation. We control 65% of the world's tin, 85% of the world's copper, 90% of the world's rubber, and in the conquered areas alone, we have 400 million workers developing these resources. We have a few resources, too, General. The bombing of Japan was somewhat resourceful, don't you think? <laughs> a mere token red, Captain. Our important buildings have been constructed to withstand any catastrophe. That makes it tough on the little guys who live in the paper houses, doesn't it, General? Don't depend upon a panic among our people. They are conditioned to shock. Our earthquakes have been valuable in that respect. No, Captain. Japan is united in this war through emperor worship and hate. Hate for all foreigners, white or otherwise. The Japanese will win. He wears wood fiber clothes, cardboard shoes. He cheerfully eats one third of his usual diet. He works 14 hours a day, seven days a week. And our soldiers, ask your troops at Bataan. We do not leave any place that we want. You must kill us. We will win this war because we are willing to sacrifice 10 million lives. How many lives is the white man willing to sacrifice? Your figures sound mighty impressive. And from all I've heard of your soldiers, they fight like cornered rats. No offense, General. But I still can't answer your questions. Tell me, Captain Ross, do you share Mr. Keppel's opinion? Do you believe your government can help you? That I don't know. But I do know this. If you do anything to us, the people back home are not going to forget it. Would it surprise you to learn that I thoroughly agree with Mr. Keppel? Washington will act as soon as they receive the news. But 
But will Washington receive the news? Is that what you mean? That depends upon you and me. If you will tell the truth and admit that you came from a carrier, I will permit Mr. Keppel's message to go through to Washington. Even if I trusted you, General, I still wouldn't tell you. And I don't trust you. Very well. That is your decision. Captain Ross, sir. You see, Captain Ross, you are not my only prisoner. Must I remind you that a chain is no stronger than its weakest link? Is there anything you wish to say to your comrade before you go? I have nothing to say. Return the prisoner to his cell. Sit down, please. Took Squasnik. Yes, I know. They brought him up to Mitsubi's office. What's going on up there? Mitsubi wants to know where our bombers came from. I didn't tell him. And if Squasnik doesn't tell him, he's going to keep after us one by one. Squasnik won't tell him I know the guy. He'll die first. He's strong as an ox. He worked every summer as an iron puddler alongside his father. Boy, was he tough on a football field. Sure, he made All-American. Best game he ever played. He played with three broken ribs. They won't get anything out of him. He'll take all they've got. Do you suppose that was Squaznik? I don't know. I don't know what to think. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Scared, kid? I wonder if we can take it. All the way, I mean. I wonder. It's the fear of being afraid that frightens me more than anything else. Just remember what the old man told you. Fear has nothing to do with cowardice. A fellow is only yellow when he lets his fear make him quit. I had it so bad when we took off. My hands were shaking, my heart was pounding so loud I thought everybody could hear it. If I'd have been all alone, nobody around, I don't know whether or not I could have made it. And now I think we better change the subject.
pilot to navigator. Pilot to navigator. Roger. 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 Army pilots, man your planes. Army pilots, man your planes. Take off now? Why? We're not due to take off for 36 hours yet. We've got to do it now. That Jap taught us source. She may have radioed Tokyo before we hit her. So long, kid. See you, Chunk King. Thanks for the ride, sailor. We'll do as much for you sometime. Attention, men. If any of you are forced down, destroy your ship at once. We don't want to take any chance on the Japs tracing you back to this carrier. Whatever the cost, protect the Hornet. 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 Must I remind you, Captain, that a chain is no stronger than its weakest link. Weakest link. Weakest link. My name is Kevin of the Swiss Red Cross. I would like to see Mr. Oraki. Concerning what place? He wouldn't approve this message. I have, uh, I have revised it according to his suggestions. Thank you. I will call it to his attention. Please return tomorrow. But this message must be sent now, at once. So sorry. It will take time. Time, time. That's one thing I cannot spare. If you wish to file a complaint, please consult Bureau of Enlightenment. Thank you. I shall. The judges of this court will now exercise their powers in accordance with the law and by authority of the emperor. Up, stand. Everybody, up, stand. Bring in the defendants. Pico Gonino's ready to take. Perhaps one is indisposed. You may be seated. With your excellency's permission, I should like to question one of the prisoners. Proceed. Sergeant Jan Skorznik. I wish to apologize to the court for the absence of this defendant. He became ill during the night. I must request that he be excused from further testimony. I am deeply touched by Mr. Sakai's concern for his client. However, I have only a few questions which I am sure will not inconvenience this poor, sick American. I have taken the liberty of having him brought here. This court has no patience with malingering. You may question the witness. <laughs> State your name. Mm -hmm. Name? Your name is Jan Skorznik. Skorznik? Skorznik? Stop it! Stop it, you!
you feels. Look at him sick. He's never been sick a day in his life, you dirty, crawling rat. If you're a newspaper, man, how can you sit there? I don't see the knock at that. Why don't you rush out of here and scream the shame of this from every headline, from every radio? If you're on honest... Get your slimy hands off of him, you dirty... Come out of here! I will instruct the correspondents to ignore this fanatical outburst. It was staged with the obvious purpose of enlisting your sympathy. General Mitsubi, proceed with the testimony. Maranatari! Sit down. Your name is Jan Skorznik? Think of your illustrious General MacArthur now. He escaped capture by running away. Don't be too disappointed, General. You'll meet him again. You approve of his action? Wholeheartedly. It was realistic. I think so, too. It is a wise man who knows where courage ends and stupidity begins. General MacArthur abandoned Corregidor when he saw defense was useless. That is clever. You insist on protecting the carrier from which you came when it no longer needs your protection. That is stupid. General MacArthur had his orders, we have ours. I'm sure he found his orders as difficult to obey as we find ours. As you wish. Remove the prisoners. Under Nino Nogodi. Within an hour, I narrowly escaped with my life. The Japanese treat me as if I am an enemy. <laughs> to the Japanese, Portugal and Russia are neutral enemies. England and America are belligerent enemies, and Germany and her satellites are friendly enemies. They draw a very fine distinction. <laughs> Good afternoon, comrades. Why aren't you celebrating the victory? You both know Mr. Keppel of the Swiss Red Cross. How do you do? How, do you do? How are you, Mr. Keppel? Why aren't you celebrating the victory? I have turned in my credentials. I've resigned my position. I am thoroughly ashamed. Won't you gentlemen join us? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Keppel has a favor to ask. I will let him tell his own story. He needs help desperately. The thing is, I'm trying to get a message to Washington. Vincent, what about Kennelly? That's what I want to know. Yeah, take it easy, Stoner. Yes, but it's night and they're not back yet. Well, whatever's happened to them, at least we know they haven't talked. That's one thing. 
America Gino. Can boni kaiste. You and you, take him in. What did you do to him? Just let me out of He's alive, that's about all. you see. I intended to continue studying art if I came through this war. The way things look, I guess I'll have to change my plans. I don't mind so much, but it's sure gonna be tough on my folks. From the first moment, I drew a three-legged cow with a crayon. My father dreamed of a second Michelangelo. Together with my mother, he saved every penny for years to send me to Italy to study. When the day came for me to go, Italy was in the war and on the wrong side. I couldn't go and I couldn't stay. I'd said goodbye to too many people. You know how it is. So I went to New York. There are fine schools there, I told my parents. Instead, I enlisted. I wanted to fight the thing that had spoiled my father's dream. As far as he knows, I'm still in New York painting beautiful pictures. I'm glad. How's Vincent? He's still out. You know what he said just before he passed out? Hold it, Angelo. We don't know which one of us will be next. Or how soon. What's what? That music. I don't hear anything. It's funny, I can hear it plain as anything. That was my old man's favorite. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. What? Oh, that's what Anne had inscribed on the wristwatch she gave me. Oh. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. And in feeling out of sight for the ends of being, and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need. By sun and candlelight. Anne. Hello, Martin. Hello. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs. And with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death.
You too, Clint? I guess I was pretty far away. <laughs> Personally, I'll settle for a nice, juicy steak. Uh, but I got the kind of thoughts that don't cooperate. The kind that insist on sticking to the trouble at hand. The kind that keeps saying, who do you think you're kidding, Greenbaum? My thoughts played a trick on me, too. One time when I was a little boy, I got lost. I stopped a policeman and asked him how to find my home. When I told him who I was, he offered to take me there. Please don't, I said. Just tell me where I live. I want to find it myself. He laughed and said he understood. He told me how to find my home. I asked him his name. Boys down at the station house called me Joe, he said. Until I joined the army, he was the only person I ever knew who let me do anything for myself. It was Joe my thoughts took me to just now. <laughs> I don't know why. Hmm. Not your girl. Not your old man. Not your mama. A cop named Joe. Rich people. Sergeant Clinton, you come. Howard. Don't worry, Greeny. It's the second time in my life I've had a chance to find my own way home. I think I can make it. Scratch. Never even touched you, Howard. Hey, nice score. Oh, God, he's as good as new. Hold on, worry for nothing. Why, you're a slug. You're for scaring me. What's the idea of being AWOL all just night? Just in time for breakfast. I'll have to confine you to quarters. What did you fella. do, Scam? It's so easy. It's so easy. What did he have to say to you? Wait a minute. I know what you're thinking, but it's not true. Go on, Howard. Tell him it's not true. Tell him you didn't talk up there. Go on, tell him. Say something, Howard. Talk, talk. You can talk, can't you? They did torture him. They must have choked him or something. He can't speak. Is that it? Is that what they did?
Please try. It's tea, Clint. It'll be good for you. I was just figuring out. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday, Captain. Happy birthday, Captain. Are you going to drink with me, Stoner? In a cup of gentle, somebody stinkingly bitter tea. I drink your very good health, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. How old are you today, sir? I'm 30. <clears throat> I'm getting to be an old man. 30. Is there any old fellow got mixed with the boys? If there has. Throw him out without making a noise. Carry on, Stoner. You make me feel younger. I don't know whether I remember it. Hang the catalogs cheat, the almanac's spite. Old time is a liar. We're 20 tonight. 20? We're 20. Who says we are more? These tipsy young jack and apes. Show them the door. We've a trick, we young fellows, you may have been told. Talking in public as if we were old. That boy we call doctor. This we call judge. It's a neat little fiction. Of course, it's all fudge. Yes, we're boys. Always playing with sword or with pen. And I sometimes have asked, shall we ever be men? Shall we always be youthful and laughing and gay, till the last dear companion drops smiling away. Then here's to our boyhood, its gold and its gray, the stars of its winter, the dews of its May. Lieutenant Bethel. we've done with our life-lasting toys. Dear Father, take care of thy children, the boys. Harvey, Harvey. What is it? It's Clinton. He says if they do to Bayforth what they did to him and the others, he's going to talk. If he feels he must talk, only God in his own conscience should stop him. Mitsubi Tazo Kurasai. Mitsubi. Oh, 
Rikutsu, Ohanso, Seneba, Naranai. Are you aware, Lieutenant Bayforth, of the information desired from you? Yes, I am. And are you now willing to reveal this information? No, I'm not. Thank you, Lieutenant Bayforth. You may step down. Sergeant Howard Clinton, take the stand. Sergeant Clinton, you have a statement to make at this time? I wish to apologize to the court for this defendant's inability to answer. He became ill during the night and suffered the loss of his voice. In that case, we will provide the prisoner with other means of communication. Coming. Write your statement. The defendant points out that since he is physically unable to talk, he has appointed a brother officer to speak for him. Proceed. Lieutenant Greenbaum, take the stand. You may step down. Read to the court the information Sergeant Clinton wishes to reveal. Gladly. Thanks to your dictaphone, you heard me say last night that if Lieutenant Bayforth was tortured, Sergeant Clinton would speak. Well, there sits Lieutenant Bayforth, and Sergeant Clinton keeps his word. He speaks gratefully of the pain you inflicted upon him. Pain which cleared the mist from his eyes and showed him with the sharpness of torture exactly why you must know where our bombers came from. He speaks of the military strength with which you must patrol the Russian frontier, if that is where we came from. He speaks of the forces with which you must guard against attack from China, in case we came from there. He speaks of your naval power forced onto the defensive, because we might have come from a carrier. He speaks of eight soldiers, unknown, imprisoned, without hope. Eight insignificant men that have your whole army, your whole navy, and your whole air force tied up in a knot. These are the things of which he speaks. 
in this moment of pain and agony and pride. And now I'll speak for myself. On the day when you give Skwasnik back his mind and Vincent his senses, on the day when you restore the use of Kennelly's arms and Bayforth's hands, on the day when you give Clinton back his voice, on that day I'll tell you what you want to know. And not one second sooner. General Mitsubi, have you any further evidence? Yes, Excellency. Step down. Proceed, General Mitsubi. Thank you, Excellency. I have been authorized by a power so high I dare not mention his honorable name to request the court to dismiss the charges against you. After all, you are soldiers fighting for your country, a situation every Japanese can understand. When you bombed schools and hospitals, you were only acting under orders. It is your commanding officers who are guilty. It is they who should be on trial. I therefore request the court that this trial be ended and the charges against these prisoners be dismissed. The court is disposed to show every leniency toward these flies, provided that they inform this court of the identities of their commanding officers so that they may be punished when Japan has won the war, and that they further inform this court as to the exact location of the base from which they came, so that immediate steps may be taken to prevent a recurrence of the monstrous murder of civilians. And what happens to us if the charges against us are dismissed? If you accept, you will be removed to a military prison camp and shown the consideration to which all legitimate prisoners of war are entitled. And if we refuse to accept? You will be found guilty as charged, and you will be executed. I beg of you, do not answer hastily. Realize what this means to you. We have thousands of British and American prisoners of war, and although Japan never signed a Geneva Treaty, we nevertheless respect its provisions. You will live in a camp with your fellow soldiers. You will be well fed and well clothed. You will be contacted by the Red Cross. You will be able to send letters to your loved ones at home. Think, Captain Ross, Lieutenant Bayforth, you other men. We are offering you your lives. You have only to accept. How do we know you'll do what you say? You can promise us anything. The members of the international press are present. They are your witnesses. And furthermore, the imperial court's decision will be handed down in writing and certified copies deposited with the Swiss legation. After what my men have been through, that's a tempting offer. And we know that the Swiss can be trusted. But I'd like some time. I request that the defendants be granted a few minutes to discuss their decision in private. The request is granted. Remove the prisoners to my chambers. This undemocratic whole has given us the democratic privilege of majority rule. It seems we're a jury which must decide whether its own members will live or die. I suggest we discuss it thoroughly before taking a vote. A man who is half dead is half decided. I am not qualified to vote. Kennelly is right. The choice belongs to those of you who have something to live for. No. You've been tortured, you've given your blood, you face death, and you remain silent. As long as I, too, faced only death, I believe that my courage could equal yours. But now I'm not facing death. I'm facing life. And I feel that only those who have known torture can weigh its value and are entitled to vote. The captain speaks for me. And for me. 
Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where, where the, the grapes of wrath is stored. He's loosed the fateful lightning of, of his, his terrible swift sword. His truth. His marching. His truth is marching on. Glo glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, I guess it needed a wisdom much more profound than ours. It's not majority rule. It's one for all, and all for one. And each of us must bear on his own conscience the responsibility for Vincent and Skwoznik. This will be a secret ballot. Here, take these. This is how we'll do it. The man who thinks we ought to talk will drop his wings in here, broken. The man who wants to remain silent will drop in his wings, unbroken. There's one pair of broken wings in this base. We'll tell the Japs what they want to know. Is that agreed? Agreed. Agreed. agreed? agreed. Agreed. This way, none of us will ever know which one decided to talk. Time is up. We're ready. Have you reached a decision? It's in here. If you find one pair of broken wings in this base, we'll speak. That's our decision. Captain Ross, is this your final word? 
No, Excellency. It's true we Americans don't know very much about you Japanese. I never did. And now I realize you know even less about us. You can kill us. All of us are part of us. But if you think that's going to put the fear of God into the United States of America and stop them from sending other flyers to bomb you, you're wrong, dead wrong. They'll come by night and they'll come by day, thousands of them. They'll blacken your skies and burn your cities to the ground and make you get down on your knees and beg for mercy. This is your war. You wanted it. You asked for it. You started it. And now you're going to get it. And it won't be finished until your dirty little empire is wiped off the face of the earth. Prisoners will stand. The defendants and each of them are found guilty of the crime of murder as set forth in the indictment. They will be removed from the courtroom and given into the custody of the military prison until such time as the sentence of death is executed upon their bodies. Hanzai ni no nokete. Hanzai ni no nokete.